to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Nicole Horry. In our show this time, we'll visit the January meeting of the Science Cafe, which featured a presentation by Dr. Alan Tokunaga of the Institute for Astronomy, IFA, at UH Manoa. Dr. Tokunaga talked about the design and goals of the 30-meter telescope, TMT, which still has a chance to be built on Mauna Kea. The Science Cafe customarily meets for a dinner meeting at JJ's Bistro on Wailai Avenue in Kaimuki. The meeting at which Dr. Tokunaga spoke was on Tuesday, January 17th. The TMT telescope that Dr. Tokunaga spoke about is the newest step in over 400 years of astronomical telescope development. It uses very advanced mirror technology and would create viewing and research opportunities that would be unmatched in the Northern Hemisphere. The TMT is a global collaboration of scientists and educators from the United States, Canada, Japan, China, and India, and will undertake frontline studies of topics such as the origin of the universe and the search for Earth-like planets. The proposed construction of this telescope, just below the summit of Mauna Kea, is on hold, pending the results of a second contested case hearing before the Board of Land and Natural Resources, VLNR. In the meantime, we need to continue the conversation as a community to determine if we would want to support a project like this in the future. Whether it will be built is very uncertain, especially considering the current composition of BLNR, which would need to reapprove the project. In the meantime, we need to continue the conversation as a community to determine if we would want to support a project like this in the future. Historically, astronomy, using telescopes on the slopes of our mountains, is something that has made Hawaii, IFA, and the University of Hawaii world famous. Dr. Tokunaga comes from Maui. He obtained his PhD at the State University of New York, SUNY at Stony Brook. He is the former director of the NASA Infrared Telescope Facility on Mauna Kea and is a specialist in infrared astronomy and instrumentation. We were glad to be able to attend Dr. Tokunaga's talk. It was both informative and provocative. Here are some excerpts. MT, from the astronomer's point of view, uh, there isn't time to uh, go into the complete story of the controversy. Um, but many astronomers uh, or people in the astronomy community, uh, like myself, are sympathetic to some of the uh, issues that the opposition is raising. Uh, there is a long history, and um, we're cognizant of that. But all the same, uh, we think this is a great telescope to have at Mauna Kea and has many benefits for science and for the uh, community. So these are the topics I'll be um, discussing. Uh, why Mauna Kea, why TMT. Uh, some, very briefly, some of the legal hurdles that uh, exist right now. Uh, the importance of the telescope to Hawaii. And is there a resolution? Uh, I, I can't really answer the last question, uh, but I'll present uh, some, some thoughts on it. So um, Mauna Kea is um, possibly the best site, or is the best site in the Northern Hemisphere and possibly the best site in the world. It depends on what uh, metric you use for measuring the uh, quality of the site. Impact on astronomy is significant. Uh, Mauna Kea observatories um, produce uh, roughly 40% of all the citations in astronomical papers. And then finally, um, the observatories, not, not just the TMT, but the ex observatories that are presently there provide uh, work and educational opportunities. And this is very significant. Especially in this state where there's always talk about how they want to promote high technology in this state. And there's nothing greater than this, uh, the astronomical observatories uh, in the high-tech industry in Hawaii. Okay, so why TMT? And the simple answer is bigger is better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not always, but in this case, bigger is better. <laughs> so um, obviously, um, a bigger telescope allows you to collect more light. This uh, feature is extremely important for the study of cosmology, that is the origin of the universe. And secondly, uh, with adaptive optics, which removes the turbulence in the atmosphere, uh, the telescope uh, can get a sharper image. In fact, the image will be at the diff what uh, we call the diffraction limit of the telescope. Now, diffraction is a um, property of light that limits the uh, sharpness of the image because there's interference from the light rays. Uh, um, but uh, the physics is such that the larger the mirror is, 
the sharper the image you can get. It's a linear relation. Okay. So um, adaptive optics makes it very appealing to have larger and larger telescopes because we can preserve the sharpness of the image and work at the, the limit of, that of uh, optical quality that the um, telescope can provide and not be uh, limited by the atmosphere. Yeah, there, there are two things um, that uh, the TMT, the 30 meter telescope will improve. One is that being three times bigger, the collecting area will be about 10 times larger. Okay. And also being three, uh, roughly three times bigger than the Keck telescopes, the angular resolution will be three times bigger. The uh, decision had to be made about how, what's the optimum size of the third, uh, should, uh, the next generation telescope should be 30 meters, 40 meters, you know, what, what should R it be? RBT. RB? Really big telescope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really big telescope is one, one name. Uh, oh, you'll see some other, uh, another name is extremely large telescope. Right. You'll see that coming up. And at one time, there was an overwhelmingly large telescope. That was a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The point of having sharper images, one of the great things is that um, it allows um, imaging of exoplanets. These are planets that are around other stars. The need for a larger aperture, this shows uh, an image uh, taken by the Hubble telescope. And it's one of the deepest images ever made by the Hubble telescope. And pretty much everything you see in this image is a galaxy. Uh, and uh, what the, Keck can, uh, what the uh, TMT can do is to obtain a spectrum of each of these galaxies because the aperture is so large. And that allows um, the astronomer to get uh, an idea of how far away the galaxy is and the physical conditions in these galaxies. And um, the frontier of research in cosmology is to understand how galaxies formed in the early universe and how they evolved. And the TMT will have, um, and that will be one of the main um, scientific objectives of the telescope. Okay, another um, example is um, very recently a uh, Earth-sized planet was discovered around a star named Proxima Centauri. This planet is called Proxima B. So this is a, an artist's uh, uh, conception of uh, the planet um, around that star. The, this planet is um, about four light years away from the Earth. It's um, the nearest uh, planet discovered. So I think that uh, when it becomes feasible to send a spacecraft to the nearest star, uh, this is what they'll be looking for. Yeah. The telescope was invented in around 1609, and soon thereafter, well, within months, I think, uh, Galileo used it, uh, was the first to use it for astronomical observations. The Europeans have um, uh, opted for a 39-meter um, uh, telescope. It's called a European Extremely Large Telescope. Um, and it will also be built in Chile. Yeah. Uh, around uh, 2025, all of these projects hope to have their telescopes finished. Yeah. But they all have their own unique problems. Um, and so we'll have to see how it all uh, plays out. Uh, for example, the, um, the large uh, European telescope, the extremely large telescope, uh, needs another partner to have the full aperture. And in the absence of the f another partner, um, they will have um, an, um, less, uh, a smaller number of mirrors in their telescope. So the effective area of the telescope will be less than 39 meters. Now whether they can actually um, complete the project or not, we'll have to see. There, um, let's see, the European telescope is funded purely by governments of uh, primarily Europe. The Giant Magellan Telescope is uh, funded by a consortium of private and public funding. There are some countries like Korea and Australia involved in this, but also institutions like the Carnegie Institution, um, Harvard University, the University of Texas. So it's a combination uh, and, and some private money also. Okay, so just a few words about the 30 meter telescope. So it's uh, operated as a um, nonprofit organization. 
And then the partners uh, consist of the California Institute of Technology, University of California, Canada, Japan, China, and India. So this is also an example of mixed um, um, pri uh, pr uh, private, uh, private and public funding. The, the land that it will be built on um, is leased land from uh, DNLR, and the, um, the university has, um, uh, is in charge of that area. And so there, there's, a lease ag there's a lease agreement that involves the University of Hawaii. Yeah. But we're not a partner, and, we're, and the University of Hawaii is not contributing, that's right, not, co not contributing money to the uh, project. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, officials from the U University of California and the, and the Caltech, uh, the California Institute of Technology came over frequently to talk to the community uh, to assure them, um, uh, to uh, explain the project and, um, and listen to their concerns. So a lot of preliminary discussions uh, went on to um, uh, leading up to granting of the permit on the basis that the um, permit was granted before conducting a contested contested case hearing. And the Supreme Court agreed with the opposition that the, um, the plaintiff that the, um, this was incorrect and, the, and that the construction permit was invalid. So the contested case hearing is underway in Hilo. Um, but um, just recently, in the last month, a new legal challenge uh, came up in which the sublease agreement itself for the TMT uh, was challenged um, because a hearing was not granted to the plaintiff in uh, 2014. So um, the UH is appealing this ruling. Um, a ruling was made in favor of, of the plaintiff and the UH is, is appealing this ruling. The Canary Islands are um, uh, on, um, part of Spain and are off the coast of Africa. And there's some similarities to Hawaii. Uh, they're vo volcanic islands and um, surrounded by ocean. Yeah. Uh, another major site for astronomy is Chile, uh, which is in the southern hemisphere. And um, Phil uh, uh, asked about uh, the differences between the northern and southern hemispheres. Uh, currently, uh, the uh, two of the three next generation large telescopes we've built in Chile. That's the Giant Magellan Telescope and the European uh, Extremely Large Telescope. And so having um, an another uh, next generation telescope in the Northern Hemisphere, whether preferably in Hawaii, but if in the Canary Islands, it provides um, coverage of the Northern Hemisphere, which, uh, which I believe is one of the reasons um, the uh, Northern Hemisphere site was selected. Currently, uh, it's about $60 million per year of expenditures on the Big Island, about $19 million in the state. Uh, the other um, center for astronomy is on Haleakala. So, but the Big Island has the bulk of the um, expenditures in astronomy. And this is a chart that came from an e economic impact report. And you can see the um, economic impact of astronomy um, compared to other um, uh, industries uh, and economic activities. Now, if the TMT comes to um, Hawaii, um, it's a $1.4, $1.5 billion project. Uh, it will um, have an operating budget of about $30 million per year. So this 90 this 60 million per year on the Big Island will increase to 90 million. And the, um, the impact, uh, economic impact, this includes um, spending and the um, associated um, benefits of the, of the spending. So the, um, it's just below 200 million per year. Uh, this could be approaching 300 million if the TMT came to Hawaii. Yeah. Now, in addition, the TMT project will make uh, annual contributions of uh, $1 million per year to the Office of Mauna Kea Management, which um, manages the summit area, not only for astronomy, but for all public uses. 
and also to OHA. Uh, one million dollars a year to educational programs in the Big Island and one million dollars a year for a jobs program for local Hawaiians. So um, there is a, a significant um, um, effort being made by the TMT project to provide direct benefits to the local um, community. Yeah. Now, is there a resolution? Um, well, as you know, the um, issues are very emotional and complex. Um, and um, the media tends to focus on the opposition. Um, <coughs> And I'd like to point out that um, there are many Hawaiians who favor the telescope. Uh, here's a quotation that I got from um, uh, a report of the hearings going on in Hilo. Uh, Chad Babayan uh, is a Hokulea navigator, and he said during the contested, contested hearing, I'm a modern Hawaiian. I believe in my traditions. I believe in my culture. But I think that's consistent with our progression. <coughs> to be highly reflective and highly motivated to learn about the world we live in. And so we ally ourselves with the tradition of curiosity and exploration. So basically, um, this is a very elegant uh, statement of the fact that the um, Hawaiians uh, never rejected Western technology or culture. They made use of it to their advantage. Decisions have to be made. Um, not everyone is going to be happy. I hope the telescope can be built here um, um, and that the, um, the young people of Hawaii, the state of Hawaii, can benefit from projects like this. And so the last, this is the last slide uh, from the Astro Day in Hilo. Um, I think the, at the fundamental level, the telescope is about the future. So I hope um, some way can be found to bring the telescope to Hawaii. <laughs>
Not only the words of Dr. Tokunaga and his colleagues at IFA, not only the words of UH at Manoa, at Hilo, and at Mauna Kea, but the words of the legislature and the governor, David Ige, to help us understand the real benefits and impacts so that we can see if big projects are worth supporting. We will need their leadership for making these choices. If you want to know more about IFA, check out ifa.hawaii.edu. If you want to know more about the TMT, visit tmt.org. If you want to know more about what state government has done or not done to support TMT, Google TMT Hawaii Government. If you want to know more about the steps the TMT Consortium has been forced to take to look into other venues, Google TMT Chile or TMT Canary Islands. We hope the citizens of Hawaii will see that the TMT could have brought real benefits to Hawaii Island, to the economy of our state, and to global science that seeks to expand the boundaries of knowledge about the universe and the origins of life itself. Supporting science is critical to our future and our relevance. In the long term and in the larger sense, nothing could be more important. We all need to understand and weigh the pros and cons of TMT and other scientific projects in Hawaii and to speak up on this subject. How do you feel about it? Do you feel you can speak up? What role should science have in Hawaii's future? And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them. But ThinkTech will take you there. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the island and around the world. ThinkTech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. And good news, we're now posting podcasts of all our shows on iTunes. See our website for links. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links, or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. ThinkTech has a high-tech green screen First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. <laughs>
call into our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call in to 415-871-2474 and pose a question or participate in the discussion. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Nicole, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Nicole does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos, and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Elise Anderson. And I'm Nicole Horry. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.